Ooh, 9.24 a.m., March 14th. It's your pal Malin. How the hell are you? Coffee cheers. First of all, let's get it together. Coffee cheers to the YouTube family all across the world. Let me get up on this microphone and tell you guys some information. I, I normally wouldn't do a video today. I was sitting here in my chair th thinking about how bad I feel from staying up late last night. And I thought, let me just turn the camera on, capture this while it's happening because... Um, this is part of the experiment. And what I'm talking about is last night I played my first show in Los Angeles ever. I've been meaning to do it for years, you know, but I've been so wrapped up in uh, my marketing stuff that I'm completely obsessed with. And my, just my life in general and trying to stay sober and trying to stay out of trouble, you know. And so the music hadn't really happened. And I finally accepted a show and we played last night. And it was a trip, man. I'll give you guys kind of the rundown. I may even throw a clip of the music in here if I can get it off of my phone. Because a few people did record audio, but it was totally dark in the room. Like it was very, very dark and hard to get video. But it was great. So I'll post what I can, either in this video, video or in the next. But it was great, man. Uh, let's go over what happened. First of all, thank you to the, the, the people that came. Um, it's really... Strange, not strange. It's really cool to see people coming from the YouTube channel and from my email list, which is probably 75% of affiliate marketers or 60%, definitely the majority. And uh, I've always been curious how this would go over, like if I combine the two things, music and marketing, which is actually what my life is. And I was wondering if I would be accepted or not. And it's cool to be accepted by you guys in some ways. Like when people come to the music shows, they know that they're not going to be able to glean any marketing information from me. So it's cool that they come anyway. And to me, that's a big, big deal. So if you were there last night, I met several people, shook a lot of hands, put a lot of uh, faces with names. And thank you for coming out. It means a lot, man. And uh, here it, it, was a, it was a pretty cool adventure. We did, there were three three acts. A girl named Katie J, who killed it. Never heard of her before, but she killed it. If you're in L.A., look up Katie J. Really, really cool. And then it was myself with a guy named Chris, and then another guy named Eric with Chris and a drummer that played after me. And uh, we, went, we played at this little place called Ham and Eggs downtown. And Chris has been in town for about three days. And we got together one night, but we ended up just taking edibles and talking and then we, but we did get to rehearse the set uh, yesterday before the show. I've been running at the set every day at my house. Running the set just means playing through the songs, timing it, you know, thinking about how it's going to work. And uh, he did, he was able to make it to my house because you got to remember, Chris is a kind of an improv guitar player. He's been in, uh, doing improv jazz for about a decade, just on tour all over the world. So he can pick up and play just about anything, especially my rudimentary simple songs and and, uh, but we still, you need to get in a room and run through them, right? And, and there were two new songs he'd never heard. So we did get together, and uh, we ran through the songs before we went down there. And that helped because, uh, you know, like I said, you need, you need to do that. He needs to know the changes. I need to know the changes. I need to know what he's doing. He needs to know what I'm doing in this way. And it was cool. Ham and Eggs is dope, man. I've never been there, but I like dive bars. And a dive bar is just a small bar. Instead of a big chandeliers and everyone sipping martinis, this was just a beer bar, mixed drinks, a kind of a shotgun bar where you have to, you know, maybe one person can walk between the wall and the bar stools, kind of like Cheers or something. You know, Not Cheers, that was a big place, but it's, you know what I mean, like a shotgun bar. And then a separate room that was uh, the music room and it was also small and that was also great because the last thing you want to do as a new performer is play in a place that holds 10,000 people and only have a hundred people there or 22 people there you know it looks real bad but when you have a room that max out that maxes out at 40 people if you put 25 in there it looks like a, it feels like a sold-out concert like it's cool so I was glad the room was small uh, Katie J was playing when I got there and, and she blew my mind. I was very, very surprised. You never know what to expect. I thought maybe she was going to be a folk singer or like a, 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 a singer songwriter type thing. But nah, man, this was beyond that. She had a whole band, beautiful acoustic guitar, and her voice was like fire. She was singing rock songs. They did a Zeppelin tune that she just murdered. And, uh, 
she broke a string. Someone in the crowd fixed it for her, ran off with the guitar and put a string on it for her, brought it back. And while she was waiting, she did two songs on the ukulele. And I thought that was awesome because, you know, what else are you going to do? She's like, okay, I broke a string. I don't know what to do. I don't have a backup. There were no other acoustic guitars in the house. She pulls out a ukulele and does a couple songs by herself while they're fixing her guitar. So shout out to Katie J. Really cool, man. And good improv uh, cover. Cover up on the broken string problem. Then, uh, so Chris and I got up and played next. Stage was really small, really dark. And but we uh, we jumped up there, set up our gear. We started playing about ten o'clock, and it went went pretty well. We had a, a, there were a few issues with my uh, electronics and a couple other things, but we pulled it off, um, which which is amazing. Uh, you know, it was our literally our first time playing some of those songs ever. I've never performed them anywhere, so the fact that we just got through the songs at all was good. And um, a lot of you guys wanted to see videos. We don't have videos because it was so dark. If you put, pointed a video camera at the stage, it was just black. If I have a clip, I'll put it here. Yeah, it was just black through the viewfinder. You couldn't see anything. A couple people took photos, but again, it was so dark. If they didn't have the flash on, it's hard to see. But it was a good time. And I, I like a dark, gritty room, man. I, I really, really do. But we did our set, had a good time. Um, then what happened? Who was up next? Eric was up next. His band is called Mason Prophet, and uh, they got up and went crazy. Like, Eric plays this big baritone guitar with like some sort of pitch shifter on it and distortion it sounds like a train it sounds like two guitars and a bass that's what I told him I said dude that sounds like two guitars and a bass it's a Dan Electro guitar with some sort of effects on it. it's crazy um, I don't know what it was but it was nuts and then they have a, a drummer a new drummer I forget her name but she was a blonde girl with like a wife beater and tattoos on and tattoos and she got back there and beat the hell out of those drums, man. She killed it. I couldn't believe it. But we ended up, uh, you know, stayed for the whole set. I stayed all night. I got there about 9, left about 12.30 in the morning, midnight, 30, almost 1 a.m. And was had a really good time. I'm glad that I played the show. As far as the experiment goes, it was a success. Um, the only downside is that this morning I woke up. I went to sleep about 1, woke up at 7. I, my brain just woke up. So six hours versus eight or nine, you know, is totally night and day. So that's going to be a pain in the ass with this music thing is going through the steps to adjust my schedule to facilitate it. But I don't care, man. Playing felt great. And if, I, if it felt great last night in a room with 20 people in it, in a dark room with, a, you know, with a low end PA and no stage lights, like, light, like very low stage lights, it wasn't the best of circumstances, but I felt fantastic. When we, getting there, was nervous, playing the show, just felt great, and got some great feedback. People said that it was a good show, and they said that I created a good vibe, which was kind of cool. Like, it was, it's a very mellow, mellow vibe. A couple people had uh, cried. They admitted they cried while I was playing, and to me, if you can get someone pissed off or crying when you play the music, you've accomplished the goal. If you get that kind of a uh, reaction, if people hate you, and they're like picketing your shows like Marilyn Manson or something. Mission accomplished. And if people are crying while you're playing and, and breaking down, mission accomplished. Like the last thing you want is for someone to see you play and go, good job. What that means is you basically are boring and you sound like everything I've ever heard. So, but good, you know. A lot of times I see bands and they're good bands, but the music doesn't really have anything unique. You know, I always look for a, an element of danger of some sort. Like, is this guy unstable? <laughs> That's what I like. I like when you hear someone sing, even if they're singing pretty songs and you can kind of hear it and you go, oh, yeah, he's a mess <laughs> or she's a mess. I love that. Yeah, man, I got home. 
crash, woke up this morning feeling a little rough, but I wanted to check in and just say hi to you guys, tell you a little bit about, about what happened, just an overview. Maybe I'll do another video about more of the details, but today is more of a journal entry for myself. Um, it's like a dream, you know, sometimes if you don't write down your dream right after you wake up, it just disappears. So I wanted to make some sort of a record of last night before it starts to fade away. But thanks again to everybody who came out, and uh, man, we're gonna, I'm going to do this again soon. Might do a show in Oklahoma soon. Uh, who knows? Who knows what will happen in the future? Anyway, man, it's Tuesday. I hope you're having a good day. I'm drinking this coffee, trying to get it together. I'm, you can see it. Look at my face. Look at it. <laughs> I look like I've aged five years. I look a little bit homeless and pretty much hungover. But, you know, that's part of it. I need a little, uh, what's the word, uncomfortableness. I need a little change in my, I have such a comf comfortable world set up that uh, I heard somebody say last night, they said, if you're too comfortable, there's no growth. You need to put yourself in uncomfortable situations um, as often as possible so that you can grow. So instead of sitting on your couch, which is your happy place with a bag of chips and watching TV, you're comfortable, but you're kind of going backwards. Instead of doing that, do something you've never done before. Take Italian lessons, Italian language, learn to do magic tricks, you know, do, learn to ride a horse or do something that scares you, jump off a building. Easier said than done, but nothing good happens in a world where you're comfortably, where you're comfortable 100% of the time, you know. Or it's tougher to get growth, I guess. But So it's good. I need to be tired every once in a while. I don't have to wake up every day with my exact energy levels. <laughs> Nine hours of sleep. REM cycle. You know, Sometimes I need to wake up and feel like crap. Because those are when the good times come, man. Last night I had like 17 different experiences with 17 different people. And... Uh, it's a good time. I missed that. It was good. And I didn't drink. I didn't feel like drinking alcohol. It didn't even cross my mind. And that's incredible. And that's it. Anyway, this is data log entry Malin Darris to Tuesday, March 14th, end time, 9.36 a.m. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. More videos to come. And as always, I will see you in the future.